From across Maryland, Virginia, and the district, this is Washington's 24-hour local news leader. News Channel 8's Live Tonight starts right now. The Beijing Olympics are a little more than two weeks away and all eyes are on China as it prepares to welcome the world. What impact will the games have on China and in turn, how will that impact the rest of the world? Joining me now live is Jeremy Haft, author of the All the Tea in China, How to Buy, Sell and Make Money on the Mainland. Jeremy, thanks for being here tonight. Great to see you. Thank you for having me, Beverly. Well, what impact are the Olympics, Olympic Games going to have on China and in turn on the rest of us? Well, the Olympic Games are having a tremendous impact on China. Uh, when it comes to reform, China is both the tortoise and the hare, and usually it plods along like the tortoise, but from time to time it races ahead like the hare. The Olympics is such a time, and what we're seeing in the run-up to the Olympics and beyond the Olympics is tremendous reform both in the energy sector um, as well as in uh, increasingly um, human rights and the give and take and push and pull with uh, press freedoms and more and more protests that we're seeing. So uh, the Olympics, I believe, are having an impact and will continue to have a traumatic impact uh, going forward beyond the Olympics. You alluded to China's economy and it has been and continues to grow at a very rapid pace and your book is all about how to, how to buy, sell and make money on the mainland, but how's that going to affect us here locally? Well. Most folks are hurting these days, obviously, about the economy, and we read every day about how we are, uh, if not in an economic recession, it sure feels like one. The one bright spot of the economy that we don't often read about is the export sector. Uh, it's frankly the one booming sector that grows year over year, 30, 40 percent a year, if not more. China is one of our leading export markets. It's our fastest growing export market. And by exporting to China, we're able to create jobs in this country uh, and earn back some of the dollars that we're trying to uh, earn to bring our economy back into solvency. So in taking advantage of the Olympics, local area firms are today selling goods and services into China in preparation for the Olympics um, and building markets beyond and that's creating jobs in local markets. You're also a blogger and today you have a post at HuffingtonPost.com talking about why the Beijing Olympics are good for the environment. How's that the case? Because we've heard a lot about all the pollution around Beijing and that China is now taking all the cars off the roads in and around Beijing to try to clear up the air. Well, well that's true, and that's precisely the point. Uh, the fact is that because of media scrutiny and the fact that the world is looking at how awful the environment is in China, that actually is finally driving some reform and some change. Uh, one major concession that we won from China, we've been working at it for years, is to try to get them to relax their subsidies on energy. They keep prices artificially low on gasoline by paying for it, and finally they ratcheted up prices uh, in an effort to combat some of the criticism that they're getting from around the world. Um, I believe we're also going to see lots of reform in the energy efficiency area um, as the world's opprobrium gets focused on China increasingly in the run-up to the Olympics. And you point out that the Chinese government in your blog today is making energy efficiency a top priority. How is China doing this? Well, China is one of the most wasteful economies in the world. So for every uh, unit of gross domestic product that China grows, uh, it actually expends more energy, as 75 percent more energy, in fact, than the United States. So uh, while China is growing and growing and growing, it grows sloppily. And one area where the United States can help China reduce its carbon emissions is through helping China become a more efficient grower of GDP and to help scale back its uh, energy uh, what, what's called energy intensity. Uh -huh. And the way that China is doing that is actually by installing more and more advanced goods and services and technologies to help it consume fuels in a smarter way. It happens that America is one of the number one providers of environmentally savvy uh, energy goods and service in, uh, services uh -huh. and environmental goods right. and services. All right, Jeremy Haft, author of All the Tea in China, How to Buy, Sell, and Make Money on the Mainland. Thanks for coming in tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.